come to realize through my accessibility work, I do now identify as disabled um, in a number of different ways, which is you know really eye-opening as you kind of delve into that more. But I do heavily rely on captions for my video content because while I don't have serious hearing loss right now, I do cognitively process information better when it's in a visual format rather than an audio format, which is something you learn as a kid. Mm -hmm. I I remember in, it was third or fourth grade, we had this unit on um, learning styles. Exactly. It was learning styles. You can be an image person or like a reading person or an auditory person or a kinesthetic learner. I specifically remember that phrase of kinesthetic learning of tactile and like all of the sensory inputs. And it was just like, well, this is how different people learn. And I remember taking a quiz that was like, you're 30% video or like images and Mm -hmm. 20% audio and 10% and like they ranked them. Yep. But it was never like, here's how you can make sure everyone is able to learn from this. It was just like, well, this is what works for you. And I'm similar to you in that it wasn't until I was 35 that I went, huh, (laughs) maybe there's some, I don't know how old you were. I'm not saying that was the similarity, but um, for me, it was being 35 and being in a pandemic and needing to homeschool a kid who I, who neither of us could sit still. And I was like, maybe I should look at this ADHD thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And the more I looked into ADHD, uh, honestly, I learned that I had an auditory processing issue from Reddit. <laughs> I feel like Reddit and TikTok have kind of led the charge on self-diagnosis when it comes to neurodivergence yes. and disability. And it's it's been really eye-opening for a lot of people. But I mean, that just goes to show how diverse disability actually is. I mean, disability is the only diverse community that you can join and leave yeah. or be part of different areas of it. So this all is kind of stuff that I try to educate people on when it comes to accessibility for social media, because I get a lot of people that are like, well, why would someone who's blind be on Instagram? Well, they, they may not have always been blind. Also, why wouldn't they? They still deserve the same level of access to information on Instagram that anyone else does. So right. They can still DM. They can still exactly. consume content. Why are you Why are you on Instagram? Yeah. Why do you feel like that would be different for somebody just because they may have some vision loss or they may have some mm-hmm. hearing loss? And like, as you and I are discussing, disability doesn't always look like inability to use Right. a specific sensory input. It's like, I I can hear everything, but mm-hmm. if I need to actually learn something, I have to read it. Yep, exactly. Is, ironically, I, I host a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, podcasts, you can write transcripts for them. You can caption them if you do podcasts with visual. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's lots of ways to make all content more accessible for just about anyone in you know multiple ways. And most of the the information on the internet, like you were saying, is very much for, you know, oh, you're going to be on YouTube, so you should add captions. Um, mm-hmm. It's creators who are, or, you know, you're recording a podcast, make sure to do a transcript. Um, and I teach that too, as an SEO person, like, hey, mm-hmm. Google mm-hmm. can't listen to your podcast, go do a transcript so that way it has something to index, right? Like there are other benefits of having these accessible conversations beyond that. And then, you know, with, with wave accessibility, there's so much information out there about web accessibility about, and you know, Mm -hmm. the little accessible pop-ups that you can get that add things to your website. But (laughs) so many people are getting their key pieces of information from social media and social media is not, it, it can be, accessible, but it's not built into the platforms. So it's For, still up to us as creators to make sure yeah. that we're doing it our best. So let's talk about that. Like, what are some of those best practices on different platforms? And then if you want to leap into some of the politics behind it, I'm here for that too. Yeah. <laughs> now, to be clear, most of the platforms do make it a lot easier now to make accessible content. My big gripe with a lot of the platforms is they don't Sure, they make these features available, but they don't do a very good job of explaining to users and content creators how to go about Mm -hmm. making their content accessible or why it's important. So there's that education gap. Um, But, you know, 
writing alt text for your images so that someone using a screen reader can access that information, you know, captioning videos as we've explained, even how you format hashtags makes a big impact on how someone has access to your content. Because if you have an all lowercase hashtag and it's got multiple words in it, it could become one long mishmashed word if it's read by a screen reader, which a lot of people don't realize. So instead you're supposed to use what's called camel case. Camel case or Pascal case either works. Um, they're actually, the camel case is actually a web developer term. I quickly learned, yes, because they're like, you're telling people the wrong way to do camel case. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Marketing um, kind of took your term and perverted it a little bit. But as long as they're formatting their hashtag correctly, that's all I care about. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want as long as the hashtag is formatted properly.